I came once at the 10 year anniversary. I, I read the names uh, and then that was it. I have kids now, my dad would have been a grandfather. It brings up a lot of different emotions being here and trying to remember his sacrifice and his memory. So my dad, he sent two guys one way to go get gear and to like get orders and he stayed with like the command post in, in the North Tower. Him and his friend Dennis, they didn't make it, but the other two who got sent out, they did. You know, how, how random, you know, life is kind of deal, you know. On September 11th, I was 14 years old, and it was my second full day of my freshman year of high school. Um, I was in math class during that time, trying to understand algebra. Um, around the time of the first uh, plane crash, around 8.45, maybe even after 9 o'clock, our principal got on the speaker system and announced that a plane had hit the World Trade Center. We didn't know what to believe. When they did announce that one of the towers had fallen, the South Tower at that point, um, then that's when everything changed. This wasn't just a, a plane hitting a building with a fire and, and you know an accident. This was something far, far worse. He had seen me out the door to go to school that day. Um, him and a bunch of his firefighters were getting their physicals, and they weren't working today. Getting the notification that there was an event going on at the World Trade Center, him and his guys grabbed fire department bunker gear, you know, firefighter equipment from the local firehouse. They jumped in the back of this guy's SUV, drove across the Brooklyn Bridge, down to ground zero, and they proceeded to conduct um, FDNY operations. He was a step-up guy. Anytime somebody needed help or to organize something, he was willing to step up. He was always willing to take the chance. I got a ride home and as soon as I walked into the house, um, I, I saw one of the most depressing scenes in, in my life. Not only the first time seeing the footage in, in the corner of the TV of you know, the plane hitting the South Tower and then the towers collapsing, but my mother lying on the couch, just catatonic crying because she knew that her husband would be down there because that was his job and that was his passion. Everybody went to church. Like, the pastor didn't call, people didn't call. We just went to church and prayed. So I started calling different hospitals, seeing if he was maybe badly injured and, and didn't have his identification or, or what. I didn't lose hope for the first few days, but after maybe about a week, you know, you kind of knew the writing was on the wall. He was found in a stairwell that had collapsed with uh, one of his firefighters from his firehouse and a bunch of civilians. Small mercy that we were able to get his body relatively intact and be able to bury it. But losing that so dramatically really changed kind of who I was and who where I was going. I, I will have to say, I did not have the best freshman year of, of high school. Everybody takes a different path to recovery and I started off on the wrong path, and it would take me a long time to get to the right path. Like, really embracing the character, the spirit of Malloy really changed, you know, my outlook on life. And without the people, the teachers, my friends here, I don't know who I would be today or if I would be here today. So I knew I wanted to serve in some aspect, and I, and I thought the compromise be in federal law enforcement. When I went off to college, I got focused a little bit more, and then when I graduated, I started looking for jobs in law enforcement. What TSA's mission truly does is to protect transportation security, right? So if they fail, 9-11 could happen again. So they're on the front line of defense to prevent 9-11. And we like to say the Air Marshal Program is the last line of defense. So if all the systems before then fail, we're the ones to stop the next hijacking. So I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want to be. Because really what I want to do is to prevent what happened to me to happen to somebody else. So while we have new hires that are coming on that did not live those experiences firsthand, or at least re 
member them, he will be that reminder for them that no matter what it is we become as an agency, this will be our legacy, so to speak. It's the framework of what we are. Sometimes it's hard to look at a bright blue sky over New York with no clouds and not think of 9-11, because that's what the day was. With this event, yes, you know, 2,983 people's lives were, you know, families were touched, but the whole community of New York was touched and the whole region was touched. So even if they didn't suffer the losses I did, they have that reflective moment of we lost something. When we lose a loved one, that memory stays with us and our families for as long as we're alive. As long as this museum is open, almost forever, like the people will understand like the memories of my father and everyone else lost that day. So like their stories won't be forgotten. Their memory will go on with all the people here today from all around the world. So people will hear their stories, who they were, how my dad was as, as a man, not just as a name. My name is Chris Waters. I'm a senior federal air marshal representing the Office of Law Enforcement, Transportation Security Administration, and I'm out of the New York Field Office.